the message title this morning is yes there is peace on earth and i bet you recognize those words <laughs> and we're going to talk quite a bit about those words from different perspectives we're going to take a look at the idea of peace as a universal principle as that which god is we're going to look at peace as world peace we're going to look at peace between each other in our relationships and personal peace so i invite you to think for just a moment about what peace means to you what would your definition of peace be and can you define it I did quite a bit of research on this and found many, many different ideas. There are some people that believe that peace is a human disposition. Some believe that it is freedom from violence. I will actually say that was that seemed to be the most common definition for it. Merriam-Webster defines it as a noun or a verb, as a state of tranquility, but as a noun, a state of tranquility such as freedom from civil disturbance, a state of security within a community which is provided for by laws and customs, freedom from oppressive thought and emotion, harmony in personal relationships, state of mutual concord between governments, or a pact or agreement to end hostilities between those at war. It has also been defined as give me peace, meaning you're asking for silence. So whatever your definition is, there's always room to grow our ideas of what peace is and how it shows up in our life. I personally love Ernest Holmes' idea of peace when he says, what more can we ask? What greater realization of life than to know that God is with us? From this great realization comes peace. And so for me, he is describing all that is, the principle of life, God itself, peace itself. The universe is designed as a quality of peacefulness. And so the universe doesn't see itself as having chaos or turbulence any more than they would call that aspect of life peace. God delights in all the aspects of itself. The only thing is that which is unlike eternality and infinity is obstructing and destructive and will fall into the nothingness from whence it came. I came up with the acronym and you know usually I, I haven't used an acronym I don't think for a while and I love acronyms for life because they really seep into me and this one actually took me a while. It didn't come right through right away. And when I first thought I had it, I shared it with David and he went, eh, is that really accurate? And I was like, oh, but it feels so good. And he goes, yeah, but is it accurate? Okay, well, you're right. I don't want to say something that's not accurate. So I worked on it and worked on it. In ease and grace, I didn't work on it like sweating. Peacefully. But peacefully. Mm -hmm. And I came up with this idea, peace is the perfect experience of absolute consciousness expressing. What I mean by that is that I truly, honestly, and completely believe that we can experience peace in all of our experiences when we keep our mind focused on the absolute consciousness that expresses through us, as us, that is us. Yeah, I think some of the problems we have is because we forget that truth, that that's all we are. God is all we are. And uh, this idea of peace as an inner principle, 
It's not just something we receive from outside of ourselves. Uh, peace is a state of mind. It's a state of consciousness. And it's not a, not a physical effect or a condition that we, once, we, once it occurs in the world, we actually be able to experience it. It's not something we have to wait to manifest before we can experience it. It's something we experience in the present because we awaken to it in our state of mind. It's something that's always here, always has been. It's a quality of God, and it will always be here. And we simply have to apply it. We simply have to be it. We have to recognize that we are it. That to, to create peace in the world, we have to be the peace we wish to experience in the world. Yes, so, so far we've talked about the allness of peace, the idea that God is peace, and therefore as we are, we are <coughs> peace at the core of our being. And that is true of all the God qualities, so you'll hear this same theme playing out, so you don't need to wonder, well, I thought last week you said we were all love, or we were all joy, or yes, yes, and yes. You are all the qualities, and I am, all the qualities that God is. And as Sandy so beautifully expressed, and we're always learning and growing into that. We sometimes in our humanity step out of it. We see a situation, and we get involved, and it creates drama. And that is not feeling like peace. So we have taken our mind off that consciousness. And so we have also talked about personal peace in this because that's what we are. So how do we bring this piece around? We came up with lots of Ernest Holmes quotes for, for this talk and then it was like 10 pages long and we were like, okay, that's not going to work. We're not just going to read everything he says. But he says so much that's so good. So here's another one. Peace is brought about through a conscious unity of the personal man with the inner principle of life. It's brought about as we direct our attention inward in peace to the peace that we know we are, we bring it about and suddenly we feel it. And that's experiencing it. So you know, we would probably in this room all agree that peace of God is absolute. But our personal peace is only as absolute to the level of consciousness we give over to that idea of peace and not become distracted by the state of our surroundings. So again I repeat, perfect peace of absolute consciousness expressing. That is Ernest Holmes says that the peace he's talking about is a peace which the world little understands. It's a calm which is as deep as the infinity of love in which we find ourselves immersed. It is the true nature of who we are, and it is within us, because we are of that nature of God. The nature of God is us expressing into the world. It's that under, Holmes says, <clears throat> it's that underlying current flowing from a divine center, pressing ever outward into expression. Peace wants to be known in the world. Peace wants to be seen in the world. God wants to be expressed in the world. It's the nature of creativity. It's the nature of divine um, projecting itself into the world. Charles Fillmore says, let the God within you express itself through you in the world without. Pretty much similar to what Ernest Holmes says, isn't it? Ernest Holmes says, first of all, you must arrive at peace of mind. It is only on the basis of peace that you can persist with absolute certainty. Peace alone gives poise. There is an intuition within you which already knows that you are one with good, that your destiny is certain, and you must listen to this intuition, for it is the voice of God in you. It is the voice of God in you and speaking through you and as you into the world. So you are peace. Rumi says, if everything around you seems dark, look again. You may be the light. Well, actually, 
you are the light. You are God expressing into the world. You are the light of peace. You are the hand of God touching those around you and comforting them, giving them peace. You are the life of God, and you are the peace of God. So as David was sharing those ideas earlier this week, it made me kind of think about an orchestra. And have you ever heard an orchestra when it's warming up and everyone's playing their own notes? And then you hear it later in the performance, and it's like magnificent. And I was thinking about how when we are not focused and aware of our peace, we are like that orchestra tuning up. Mm -hmm. We aren't in melody and tune and a vibrational energy with those around us, with the universe as a whole. And yet when we are each playing our own indi individual um, instrument, we are playing our instrument into the world. We're still not always playing the same note not even at the same time necessarily, but it sounds much better, and that's peace. That is an example of the way peace shows up. Ernest Holmes says, God is peace. We enter this peace in such degree as we withdraw from confusion. There's a great story about a king whose people had great confusion at his decision. It seems that he wanted to experience more peace himself, and so he called all the great artists in the area to come together and to bring in their masterpieces and to share them with the world and with the group that was collecting in the great hall, and so they did. And he invited the people in to look at them and marvel at them and look for the one that they thought was representative of peace to the greatest degree. So they came, and the majority of them chose a beautiful painting, maybe something like the one Sandy was standing in front of earlier. <laughs> but this one had a lake, and it was calm and serene. And in the background were majestic mountains, smooth and tall, snow-capped. The sky was vibrant blue with soft, puffy little white clouds. And it was indeed extremely peaceful. The people loved that one. As I said, the majority of them chose that one to represent peace. And were in a state of confusion when the king said, no. That one is not the one that most represents peace. And they were saying, why? Why is this not the representation of peace? And he brought the group over and he showed them the one that he had chosen. And they looked at it and what they saw was a lot of chaos and a lot of bland coloring. The mountains were jagged and harsh and the picture had a lot of grays and dark browns and deep yellows and the people were like how are you seeing peace in this picture this is cloudy it's dark and the king said well you aren't looking deep enough if you look at the little crevice inside of the mountain you will see that a sprout has grown there and on the sprout there's a bird's nest with a tiny little baby bird peeping up over the top. That is peace. Peace is when you are not looking at your surroundings, but rather knowing that inward moment of bliss. And that bird and that sprout represent the peace, regardless of the surroundings. And I love that story because it really I think we can all relate. Maybe we're not looking at a, a competition of art, but we do look out at the world and we see things that don't appear to be representative of peace, either in our own personal life or in the world. And we do ourselves an injustice when we do that because peace is a perfect experience of absolute consciousness expressing as you.
Yeah, if you look at the world around you and the world affairs that are going on, it's quite difficult to maybe sometimes, well, maybe sometimes quite difficult to find where is the peace, where is the commonality, and where is unity showing up around the world. Um, it's quite, it can be quite a challenge. I remember when you start, when you change the peace, peace song to Yes, There is Peace on Earth, a lot of people had a problem with that because they say, Well, there's not peace on Earth. Well, from our standpoint, there is, and we have to look at it from that point of view. Ernest Holmes says, you and I know that no matter how confused we are, if we get by ourselves long enough and think peace, we will become peaceful. Peace is the divine reality at the heart of God. Where there is a community of interest and a number of persons are involved, and there is general confusion, if there is only one person to know peace for that group, we will neutralize the confusion of the others. It reminds me of that saying that, it only takes a spark to get a candle glowing. It takes one piece multiplied, carrying out into the world to make a difference. Napoleon Hill says a group of brains coordinated in a spirit of harmony will, will provide more thought energy than a single brain, just as a group of electric batteries will, will provide more energy than a single battery. We start with myself, and I be the peace that I want to see in the world, and then I pass it on, and then I connect with someone else, and then connect, and that person connects, and exponentially we're connecting, 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 creating the peace you want to see in the world. Yes, and when you first gave that example, you were giving the example as batteries, and connecting battery to battery, and I was thinking about the charge that's in that battery. And within us is the power to have that same charge, that same energy of life. I read an article that was talking about asking the question, um, how are you creating world peace? And it was saying that most people, when presented with that question, their response is, well, I can't create world peace. And I thought, wow. I don't know but what that might have been my answer before this talk and yet for years I've studied this teaching I know I am peace within but I never really thought about how I could have an effect and as David just shared as we connect and we create peaceful relationships in our own little circle of the world we are affecting world peace Ernest Holmes said, when, when the world really desires peace, it will have it, and not until then. He goes on, it's quite a, uh, an admirable talk that he gave this one, but basically, I'm going to put it in a nutshell, he is saying that we must approach the collective unconscious by replacing ideas of separation with a conscious unity of good. We must know our oneness, and we must share that peace as oneness in the world. I found a site called Vision of Humanity, and in it they talk about why we need a new definition for the word peace. So I return to the beginning when we talked about peace, and I share with you that their terminology is, is negative peace is the absence of violence or fear of violence. And they call that negative peace. Positive peace, they say, represents the attitudes, institutions, and structures that create and sustain peaceful societies. It reminded me about one of my favorite tools. I, don't, I call it a spiritual tool. You can or not, I don't care. But it's that idea that if you're Standing, and I vision myself often standing on the top of a cliff amongst the mountains with the valley below. And what happens if you shout out into that? It echoes and it vibrates throughout all the land. That's pretty powerful. So what are we defining as peace and shouting out into the land? Are we saying it's the absence of violence, 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 violence. 
and it echoes out into the world? Or are we claiming that it represents that which sustains peaceful societies, and I'm going to go back to my own idea here, of perfect experience of absolute consciousness expressing. Consciousness expressing, expressing, expressing. Can you just feel yourself there? There's a huge vibrational energy difference between the negative and the positive. We are designed in the image and likeness of all that is positive. So it's really just a simple matter of changing our perspective, um, being optimistic rather than pessimistic, and buying into the negative fear stuff that's coming to us, um, looking at things consciously, optimistically. <laughs> and so. Uh, the truth is that we can be at a peace in a world that seems to be at odds with our personal preferences. And we can be at peace when we feel personally, physically, or just emotionally uncomfortable. We can still be at peace because peace is a state of mind. And if we can look at the world around us optimistically and hold that as our absolute truth, we can begin to see the world in a different way. We quite often think that once the world agrees on everything, we will be at peace. Once the world actually thinks the way I do, the world will be at peace. But that's not what peace is. True peace is, an accept is the acceptance of all points of view, whether or not they are the same as ours. And looking at them and seeing the unique perspective and seeing how they all fit together, how all the shards of life fit back together create the nature of God in our lives. That's what true peace is, finding the commonalities, finding the truth, reminding ourselves where we came from in the first place. Ernest Holmes says, let us live as though peace were the mandate of God, because it is. That should be enough. But he goes on and says, together let us affirm it, and let us encourage others to affirm it, no matter what the opposition appears to be, for it is a fundal, fundamental reality of God. Yes, so something that we have wanted to do for quite a while, we're going to do today, and it is take a look at our peace song and why we sing it the way we do. Originally, as David said, it was let there be peace on earth. In Science of Mind, we use this thing called treatment, and we have the three P's. We keep it positive, present tense, and personal. Positive, present tense, personal. Because that is a developed method of spiritual mind treatment that has proven that it will work always. No, that it does work mm -hmm. yeah. always. <laughs> we are creatures of habit. But when we get together and we sing that peace song, it's pretty incredible, isn't it? We don't ever stop to think, oh, who's singing on key and who's not, or who's not singing, just taking it in. We're just out there having a good old time. And these are the words that we sing and why we sing them. We sing, yes, there is peace on earth, and it has begun with me. Well, right off the bat, we have the personal part of that. It has begun with me. I'm accepting personal responsibility for the peace on earth. And I like to sing, yes. Yes, reminding myself that this is the truth. Yes, there is peace on earth, the peace that is meant to be. If God is all it is and God is peace, then that is what it's meant to be. It is the being of who we are, it is the true essence of all that is. And so therefore, it, it is what is meant to be, peace. With God as our power, family all are we. I don't know about you, but my family doesn't always agree on everything. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we quite often bump heads on things, but when we get together and discuss it and, and see what e each other's um, viewpoints or perspectives on that, we generally come into agreement. Well, not agreement, we, we still love each other and move through it in a positive way. We experience a sense of peace. And I will say that that was, uh, that was an intention set in motion by David and me. We 
declared what would and would not happen in our household amongst family members, and we had to practice for a while. We had to practice. We had to remind each other who they really are. Who are you? We have to remember the truth of who we are because sometimes, like last week, sometimes we go to bark out something. And is that who you are? Is that who you really want to be? Not if you stand back, take a breath, and get your cool back again. Now we walk with each other in perfect harmony. Yeah, as Deborah was talking earlier about the, the symphony, harmony can only be, well, we can only have harmony if there are two or more parts. Harmony cannot be just one part, that's unison. It has to be at least two parts, and those two parts work together to create something beautiful. And in those two parts, or 15 parts, or our hundred parts that we are moving toward as our congregation or more, we are still one, one peaceful energy. Yes, peace begins with me, and this is the moment now. Right now, here we go with the present. We talk about the personal, and now we're in the present. So this is happening right now in every now moment, continuously. With every step I take, yes, this is my sacred vow. Yes. And that includes every action, every decision, every thought, every thought that you have that is peaceful makes a difference. And Thich Nhat Hanh has a book called um, Step Into Peace, or Every Step Is Peace, something like that. He's not talking just about the physical steps that we take, but exactly what David said, all the ways that we show up. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Yeah, we're eternal, infinite beings. It's not just with me. I make an effect throughout all of eternity. Yes, there is peace on earth, and it has begun with me. Yeah, it has begun. It brings it present and also makes it personal. It has begun with me. And it's a very positive statement. The three Ps. So remember those as you go about practicing your treatment this week. A great ending for a service, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we're going to move into meditation now. Yes, we are. <laughs>